There's a deeper impact, and uh, I invited uh, Dr. Vincent Gaddis, if you'll welcome him to the stage, uh, to explain what this means for the city of Aurora and our kids here. It's always difficult following Fred. This is twice now. But uh, I'll, I'll be brief. I'll just start with uh, a, a, a quick story and a, uh, and a statement. Um, uh, I teach at Benedictine University. Uh, a large part of the students who I advise are students who are looking to be social studies teachers uh, in Illinois. And uh, there's been a persistent kind of question, uh, especially in the last year. We just fin I just finished doing a bunch of round of advising for next semester uh, of really excellent, <laughs> some of the best kids I've had in a long time, um, who are uh, in the teacher education program, who are, who are seriously questioning do they want to continue to, to, to go into the profession of teaching? Um, and that is a really troubling situation. Uh, it's troubling when you have kids say, well, if I, if I go ahead and I become a teacher, it sounds like you know, I'll have to put away my own retirement, plus they'll have who knows what's happening with the pension system, maybe I should go into private industry. And that, that is a devastating kind of um, statement by some of these young, really bright kids who want to do nothing more than join in what is the most important cultural work in a society, which is teaching our children. And so, uh, this pension issue is about teachers. It's about that. But more importantly, it's about our kids. It's about the cultural work that we do. And so it raises an important question, at least for me, uh, which is my jumping off point for this discussion, which is this. How do we as a, a city, a state, value our children? That's my question. Uh, one way that we show how we value our kids is how we value those who are responsible for teaching them. When we're asking teachers in some districts out of pocket, they pay that 9.4%. In other districts, the district may pay it for the, for the individual. Uh, for the individual. But now, this particular bill, uh, HB 6258, is going to ask teachers to pay more into a system, a higher percentage, to cover what the state was supposed to contribute. I have a problem with that. That is, uh, we're talking about a cost shift but what we need to be talking about is a shift of priorities. We don't need a cost shift because in districts like East, and you all, you raise your hands as teachers, you know this, so I'm you, you, you could tell it better than I can, but you know that in both 131 and 129, we're spending less money per student per year than even the state average. And so we're going to cost shift to ask those districts to pay more into pensions, where is that money going to come from other than curriculum? We don't need a cost shift, we need a shift in priorities. When we have the, some of the troubling numbers that as teachers we are um, using every bit of skill and wisdom that we have to solve, like raising the graduation rates uh, in uh, both East and West District, right? The West District is a graduation rate of about 69 percent, 131 about 65 percent. How do you raise graduation rates 
if you are taking money out of operational budget to take care of a pension problem that the state was supposed to pay and taking that money out of art, music, salary increases, et cetera, for those who are doing the most important cultural work in a society. We don't need cost shifts. We need a shift in priorities. When we, <laughs> when we look at the educational infrastructure right now, we know that we need more teachers, more teachers' aides. We need better instructional materials. We need to raise technology in the classrooms. We need to help our, uh, not only do we need to do training for teachers for higher tech in classrooms, but we need to have that infrastructure there for teachers to teach in a technology-rich environments. We need to be adding to our library holdings. I mean, we know this. We know that that's true. But you can't get there if you're now asking a district to pay more into a pension system that the state was supposed to be paying, but now you're asking that teacher who's already buying, in many cases, their own supplies for their own students in their own classroom out of their own pocket. Now you're asking them to pay more into a system because the state failed on its obligations. The teachers, to my knowledge, I could be wrong, to my knowledge, the teachers have never missed a payment into the TRS. I think that's true. So we don't need a cost shift. We need a shift in priorities. We need a shift in priorities that says that teaching our children is in fact, not up here ethereally, abstractly, but concretely in our budgets, that teaching our children is the most significant cultural work in a society. That's what we have to do. We don't need, we, we, we don't need cost shifting. We know that it's getting more difficult to attract excellent teachers into districts where you're telling them, well, if I'm 22 and I'm going to teach, what kind of, of guarantees, what, how do you talk to that young teacher about their future when you say, well, we don't really know if we're going to fund your pension or not. Well, we don't really know if we if it were 9.4% of your pay goes into the TRS, but over the next five or 10 years, more of that money is going into TRS, but we don't really know if it'll be there when you retire. How do you recruit that student when IBM is recruiting that student? How do you recruit the best, brightest minds out of our universities if we can't guarantee that at the end of that excellent journey, teaching our children, they won't be here. They won't be struggling to find out how is it that I spent 35 years or 38 years of my life teaching, changing the lives of thousands of children and yet, now, in my retirement, my pension is being assaulted. We don't need cost shifts. We need a shift in our priorities. We need a shift away from what we current, how we currently even fund education. We all, you all know, we all know that Illinois has the highest percentage of property tax to income tax uh, to education than almost any state in the country. That wealthy districts are incredibly well off and poorer districts are d struggling just to get the door, keep the doors open. It's not fair, it's not right. We know it's immoral, it's a, it's a moral question. These issues that, I, that we're addressing tonight are not only fiscal policy issues and, and those who are coming after me are going to give you a ton of excellent suggestions. I just wanted to keep our mind and our eyes on the ball. This is a moral question, an ethical question, an existential question. That if we are not prepared to fully fund 
and care for the workers who are involved in the most significant cultural work of a society, teaching our children, then what we're really saying is that our kids don't matter, that they're not a priority. Because this is part of an assault, really in a larger sense, on public goods, right? Okay, public education, free, high quality public education is a public good that we cannot compromise. And the pension debate, as we've seen uh, other uh, benefit debates in other states, this is part of, of, a, of a way of attacking those public goods. And we must keep public goods public. And it matters that we do so in an ethical way. And we do so not on the backs of poor districts or, or, or teachers, but simply that we say that if the state has made an agreement, then the state will pay. We don't have, uh, as Fred quite rightly said, uh, we don't have a pension problem, we have a revenue problem. The solutions are out there, and they're not that difficult. It takes the political will to say that the most significant work a person can do, cultural work a person can do in a society, is teach. And we don't have a cost shift issue, we have a shift in priorities that we need to undergo. Thank you.